we're at an area where the Duwamish River flows into Elliott Bay. And you can see around you, there's a lot of industrial use here. This is also an area where, where juvenile salmon are out migrating from the green Duwamish system into the saltier water of Puget Sound. And so the goal of this site is to provide them habitat where they can feed and grow and make it out to the ocean eventually. This site is very key. It's at this very industrial part of the system where we know juvenile salmon are looking for shallow water, wetland type habitat. There was a very old uh, dock here and it was just half falling apart and not good. And Vigor wanted to do some building of their own. So as like a mitigation, they chose to take this portion and restore it in a sense and that they're going to take down this very old dock that wasn't being used anymore and then turn it into habitat for juvenile salmon coming out of the Duwamish River. So they have this very interesting kind of one side and this little island here so that it kind of flows through so the fish can actually come and leave on two sections, which is kind of cool. So it's like nice habitat. You got some grass, you got some trees, and then you got some water flow. That's really important for salmon habitat. Our lab is called the Wetland Ecosystem Team. We're at UW in the School of Aquatic and Fishery Sciences. It's been really great partnering with Long Live the Kings. We find that we're able to bring UW expertise and that academic side and partner with others in the nonprofit community or elsewhere. Today we're setting what's known as a beach seine from our boat. And we're out here, we caught, today we caught juvenile coho salmon, chinook salmon, and steelhead trout. And we're able to sample the diets of all of them uh, with a system where you don't kill the fish. It's called gastric lavage. You make them, them upchuck their diet contents into a sieve, put them in a jar, bring it back to the lab. You want to know what they're eating. Uh, some food is better than other food. The invertebrates are typically what juvenile salmon need to eat when they're out migrating. Uh, and you, in order to have insects, you need a place where insects will be. And insects tend to not be where there's just a bunch of long, flat concrete. They want grass, and trees, and dirt, and you know, shrubs and stuff. You can see that they've grown all sorts of different plantings to you know, attract insects and other food sources that uh, juvenile salmon will want to eat. We're taking fallout traps. Those are part of the insect traps that we collect and we're going to compare them with the diets and we're going to see if they're eating from there or if they're eating from uh, the center of the water proper. So all it is is just some water and it just has some soap that um, breaks the water tension. We put a little rock down here just to keep it flat, because you want it as flat as possible. And the tidal line called us the riparians though, so hopefully these guys get bushier and bigger and they'll produce more insects. So things that fall out into the water are a potential food source for salmon as well. So you got stuff in the water, got stuff out of the water. So that's why it's important to know what they eat because it can show what this new location can provide for them and if they're eating here. Shiner 86. And yes, you can't just do one year and be like, great, you have to have multiple years. So this is our first year sampling this site post-restoration. And we'll be out here in the future years as well to see how the site progresses through time. When we come back next year, I'm hoping to see the plants a little bit bigger, the bushes a little bit bushier, and you know, maybe more insects, but you know, we're gonna find out. Welcome back. This is another year of monitoring here at the Vigor uh, Habitat site. It is May, it is spring, things grow and change and they're different and we're here to fish for some juvenile salmon and whatever else we catch. Oh, was that a fish jump? It was. Oh, we gonna get fish today. It was a really good catch today. We got a good amount of salmon. Last year, we caught similar things. We caught coho, chinook, steelhead, chum. And yeah, so it's hard to tell until the end of the field season, but in general, it's awesome to have juvenile salmon using the site. Just anecdotally, are the fish using the habitat? 
Yes. Are the fish eating? Yes. We have diet data from this year and last year. Looks like a pretty healthy fish. It's beautiful. Look at the yeah. colors. Are there insects in the insect trap? Yes, there are. <laughs> Effectiveness is a, is a metric that you can't really decide until you put it all together. But just from being out in the field, you can say the juvenile salmon are using the habitat. Putting our resources together is what's making this happen. And it's happened in many other restoration projects. You'll probably notice that no one restoration project is like one organization. It's gonna be that and then communities and tribes and you know, everybody working together. That so that that's the positivity part about this is like, oh, we can, you know, this group wants has a piece of land, this group wants to help fund it, this group wants to help monitor it. That's how you make things work. It's one of those restoration sites that, you know, I never thought there'd be a restoration site on Harbor Island. It's, you know, totally human created industry and it's really fun to see what's using it. Typically, these projects will take multiple years to collect data and you want to compare it to something. So for us, we compare it to Jack Block. This was the nearest adjacent beach. You know, this is a park, it's not a restoration site. Um, but it is a shallow beach that we can pull a beach stain on to see what fish are here and what they're feeding on. And so it was in close in proximity to Vigor, and so we wanted to sample here to put a comparison. Because uh, we're nerdy scientists, that allows us to look at the data and make graphs and do statistics so we can say, okay, how effective is the Vigor site? Do we see fish using the site that we expect based on our sampling here? Are they feeding similarly or different? So we can compare before and after and also to an adjacent control site. So that is very helpful for making sense of all the data. This holds true through time and our data analysis says that. Um, it's going to show that if you build a restoration site in this very urban, very industrial area, that you will provide benefits for juvenile salmon. Throughout my career to this point at UW, I've been fortunate to go out and not just see restoration sites on the Duwamish, but also sample at them and there's been an increase through time on the number of sites happening. So it's hopeful to me and encouraging that seeing these sites actually happen, which takes a whole amount of effort and funding from a bunch of different people. You know, seeing them on the ground and seeing them happen and being able to, you know, get a sense of how effective they are, that gives me hope because if that can continue, it's only going to be beneficial to the whole area in the long term. I hope that the trees will get taller. I hope the grasses keep growing and I hope that the salmon keep coming back.